The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Greetings everyone and welcome to this episode of Gen X YZ. Now on today's show we bring to you two amazing guests who have done work that inspire society as a whole through their continuous efforts in empowering the community of persons living with disabilities. They've founded organizations and they've also led projects on so many different avenues. So it's a pleasure to have us on today's show as well. Now introducing them is Janita Rukmal and Janit Ittapan. Thank you for joining us on today's program of Gen X YZ. Thank you for having us here. It's a great pleasure having both of you as well on today's program. Now to start off on our conversation, I would like to address a rather pressing concern within your community and general public as well, uh, Jonathan and Janita. It's how exactly you all prefer to be identified and addressed to from the general public. We see people referring to you all as differently able community or community of persons living with disabilities. We'd like to know exactly how would you all prefer in being addressed from the general public and even from me as the host for today's program. Janita, we'd like to hear from you first please. That's a very important uh, question and nice to start our program by itself. So, um, when we talk about this whole um, terminology, one thing we have to keep in mind is that um, me, Janita Rukmal, first is a person. And then comes a part of my identity that I am Asian and I'm a Sri Lankan and among all those I live with a disability, which is a visual impairment. So that is just a part of my identity. And some of the people uh, feel that referring to that identity is like taboo. It's very stigmatized. Mm -hmm. So we have to come up with a different approach. And that's why some people call differently able people. But ironically enough, we all have different abilities, right? Exactly. So you as a presenter has a different ability which I don't have. So like that, um, every one of us belong in this definition. Whereas um, the part of my identity which is called disability is something that I don't want to hide. And therefore, I would like to be addressed as a person living with a disability just like you very correctly started this program. And also we have to uh, keep our viewers informed to stay open-minded because some people like to keep that identity as a badge of honor because living with a disability also is something that should be embraced as a part of diversity. So there is uh, identity first language where some people would like to call disabled persons also. However, my preference is to be called a person living with a disability. Thank you so much, Janita, for that amazing introduction. I think. While we all try to come up with a positive connotation of referring to you all as differently able, we only ignore your identity through that as well. Janit would like to hear your perspective on this, Janit, and how exactly you all prefer to be addressed to. All right. So I'll keep this very simple. Yeah. If you were to approach a person that you want to get to know, you will go with, hi, what's your name? I'm so and so. Exactly. More often than not, when I'm being approached, or any other person with a disability for that matter, they start with the question, Oh my God, what happened to you? Not even a hi. So, That's very unfortunate. Yeah. It is. So, keeping it simple, like Janet mentioned, disability can be a part of our identity, yes. But first and foremost, we are a person living in Sri Lanka. So, we have a name. So, get to know us. What's your name and what do you do? Exactly. And there, there are onwards, we can have a conversation, be friends and make connections. So, I so think it's simple as that then. Yeah. If I am to refer to my person, you know, the disability, I refer to myself as a person living with a physical disability. Yes. Or a person who is using a wheelchair. Definitely. 
that goes back and forth. Yeah, that's that's great and very simple as kept as that, uh, Janit. Yeah. Hopefully, it can be incorporated within our general public as well. Yeah. Now, speaking with regard to your efforts, now both of you all are a part of Enable the Lanka Foundation and also where you have co-founded it, Janit. We'd like to know the purpose behind this organization of Enable Lanka Foundation. Ah, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, let's go back to the year 2014. That's where Enable Lanka was a concept. So at that time, I was in the university, and a friend of mine uh, said, "Okay, there are a lot of organizations serving in different ways for the persons living with disabilities. So what is something in common to these organizations?" So. In Sri Lanka, something that we observed was that charity has been at the forefront when it comes to serving the persons living with disabilities. They were looked at as a bunch of people who should be taken care of, who will be forever dependent and who will need the support of everyone else even to live and survive through the brief span of their life. But we want to change it and the rhetoric or the discourse was building up towards this change and that is called disability inclusion and Enable Lanka had the vision of mainstreaming disability inclusion as we started it in 2015 and for that I was joined by a fellow volunteer of mine who was uh, volunteering with me in other projects uh, whose name is Crystal Reed and with the efforts of Enable Lanka she was able to become the Commonwealth young person in the year 2017 as well. Nice. So, uh, with that, uh, we will talk about our work later, but that is how Enable Lanka was started. That's a great vision uh, to hear Janita as well. Now, Janita is also a program lead currently at Enable Lanka Foundation. What's the current stance of the organization and how have you all come so far from 2014? Yeah, so I joined, like Janita mentioned, just late 2019, back in December, and with all the work they have done, so they, back when they started in 2014, they did the Listen app for okay. people with visual impairments, and they did a lot of advocacy work. So, after, since my joining Enable Lanka Foundation, currently we completed the program called Target. So, training through accessible remote guided education techniques. Okay. So, the acronym goes as TARGET. Mm -hmm. So, the, where we targeted youth with disabilities to be mainstreamed into employment, to skill up, upskill their education and the employability skills. Nice. Because more often than not, there's a mismatch between what the employable world wants and what these students have. Yeah, exactly. Then of course we do mentoring youth with disabilities and for companies we do disability inclusion and accessibility audits. So those are kind of the services that we currently do at Enable Lanka Foundation and most recent work being the target program and the partnership with Microsoft APAC program which is the entire the lead program, the main program that we do where we partner with Microsoft Sri Lanka yeah. and Enable Lanka being the main non-profit organization that works to work with youth with disabilities so that they be employed in the IT sector, the management sector, wherever they may be. There are some amazing efforts uh, coming up there through your organization, Janita and Janita. Now, speaking with regard to on a local perspective and the current stance we see in Sri Lanka of community of persons living with disabilities, how do you identify them as being advantages or being disadvantaged in being citizens of our country, how has the response been, how has the situation been in living within our country, Sri Lanka? All right. So, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, Janit, yeah. So, I'll start and then Janit yeah. can add in. So, it's both advantages as well as disadvantages to the most part. Okay. Again, li like we started, starting with the attitude and the terms being referred to and the, the, the society, the way they approach, them not being aware is a main problem. And let's, I'll put it in this way. When we are born, we grow up and we grow, go through the preschool education. 
and then we go into the primary education, the secondary education and so right. on and so forth. Thereafter, we generally go through university education and then we try to be employed. So, in terms of the disabled youth, when let's say they are being born with a disability, they have to have what we call as accommodations. All of us need accommodations to be you know, accessible in education, employment, wherever they, they may be. So for a person with a disability, to go someplace, we generally go through transport, yeah. but the transport is mainly, the public transport is mainly inaccessible. And let's go with education. People, the authorities, not all, but most, are hesitant to admit a ch child with a disability because, from their perspective, they don't have the necessary resources to support and accommodate. Yes. And then in employment also, again, the necessary accommodations aren't given aren't accommodated through the policy and framework. So, for the most part, the necessary regulations starting from the 1996 Act on the Protection of Rights of Persons with Disabilities being there, they are the National Secretariat for Persons with Disabilities was appointed. Yes. And then 2003, the National Disability Policy was put forward. 2006, the accessibility regulations are there, put forward by the Ministry of Health. So, all that regulations are there and all things, all this started with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. All right. So, which we signed in 2007 and then ratified in 2016. So, all the necessary human rights were uh, rightly mentioned by Janita, can be mentioned by Janita. Yes. And all these are there. The implementation is a question, but with a simple Google search, of course, we being the youth, we do a lot of Google search. Yeah. It's available in the public domain, and any one of us can get those documents. And if there's anything that exactly. Janita and on your perspective, uh, Janita, on how exactly is the current stance you see in Sri Lanka of persons living with disabilities? Do you think it of being advantageous or disadvantageous in our country? Well, the way I see it is, uh, being born in a country is not really a conscious choice we make. We are just born in wherever we are destined to be born, right? So, but uh, the real question would be, um, if you ask a foreigner, a foreigner living with a disability, whether you would choose Sri Lanka as a destination that you would like to spend the rest of your life, what kind of answers will we get? Um, well, I have a lot of doubts about that. Let's keep it aside and wonder how uh, Sri Lanka has catered or received the persons with disabilities. So, initially I hope uh, you remember me uh, pointing towards the fact that Sri Lankans would like to uh, camouflage or hide mm -hmm. the fact that disability exists, right? Yes, exactly. So, with that, a country whose cultural and social consciousness has that fact woven into it, do you think that there will be a lot of exposure for a person living with a disability? Typically, uh, fashioned by the kind of Victorian ideals that post-colonial Sri Lanka is, uh, I mean, retaining thus far, uh, persons with disabilities are preferred to be kept as a minority that's hidden from the public eye most of the time. And uh, to top it all, we have a misidentified concept of karma from uh, the Buddhist values, where people say, okay, uh, disability is a part or a result of a person's bad karma, so they have to pay for it, and that's the end of it all. And as people, we have to take care of them, look after them, support them. That is the social consciousness that we are experiencing in Sri Lanka. But unfortunately, the world has moved on and the world believes that every person living with a disability has rights 
of his or her own to live in the way they like and to make independent choices. So Sri Lanka is far behind in that aspect regardless of everything that Janit mentioned Certainly. has put it in paper and uh, documentations and structures drafted and put in place. But with this attitudinal gap we have, uh, Sri Lanka unfortunately is lagging far behind when it comes to the well-being or um, equitable living for the persons living with disabilities. Thank you both of you. I think it helped us understand the stance of the situation in Sri Lanka with regard to the community of persons living with disabilities. With that, we are now moving on to a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on this insightful topic. Welcome back everyone and today we are speaking to you on the situation of persons living with disabilities in Sri Lanka and joining us as guests is Janitha Rukmal and Janit Ittapana. Now early on we spoke about the current situation we see of persons living with disabilities in Sri Lanka. Now I think also back in 2014 when you all founded Enable Lanka Foundation, was there also a reason being, the reason on founding the organization, was it also because there was a lack of NGOs working towards supporting the development of persons living with disabilities in Sri Lanka, Janit? Was that the purpose behind it yeah so that's one of the concerns that we had you know or like I mentioned earlier the regulations were there but the, the community across Sri Lanka persons living with disabilities came together and developed different different communities so be it the people living with deafness and they came together across Sri Lanka and they started to do their own advocacies so that their rights are being met and th their rights are being vocalized. Definitely. And that being one of the main, so that the regulations are being enacted and while to enable the persons living with disabilities to know their rights, mm -hmm. to work for their rights. And I believe Janita can also add on to that. Yeah, Just as Janita uh, rightly mentioned, uh, well, NGOs were formed, as you see, when government is not uh, making enough progress, regardless of which political parties are in power, when it as a mechanism does not make enough progress, people get together. And Enable Lanka had a very different vision and also talking about the NGOs which are active in this sphere of disability inclusion. As I mentioned earlier, most of these organizations are engaging in charity related work. But um, there is this uh, cliched saying that when you give a man a fish, that will be enough for a man to survive for the day. But if you teach the man how to fish, then there will be more sustainable living conditions for that person. Okay. And even that can go on to make an entrepreneur who can maybe revolutionize the fishing industry, right? Certainly. So that is where the empowerment comes and that is where the difference of the vision of Enable Lanka and the organizations which have been coming up as of late comes based on a right-based framework where we talk about disability inclusion and embracing the diversity uh, in sort of included with the disability. Jonathan, now I think you've been involved uh, in empowering communities uh, such as your, yours for a long time now, within a span of 20 years per se? Maybe. <laughs> so within that time period uh, exactly, Janita, how exactly? Now you mentioned where NGOs would put pressure on the government in enacting their and implementing their laws and acts for developing your lifestyles. Yeah. How has the support been from the government and even the previous and current governments per se how has their supports been in providing you all with better lifestyles? Well, we have to revisit that uh, notion I mentioned about where Sri Lanka as a whole in its cultural co-awareness would like to keep disability as an area um, focused on charity and uh, sort of um, a lukewarm interest, right? So 
the governments have always been lackadaisic regardless of the, whichever the political ideologies they are backed and uh, as a result um, the kind of legislative intervention that got through back in 1996 maybe when i was a school kid uh, was primarily uh, centered in three main pillars such as the access to education access to employment and uh, a bit about the accessibility of structures and places and uh, as janit mentioned uh, earlier uh, they put the structures in place so that they can tick all the boxes to say okay we have done work on disability inclusion yeah. but what we see in the society today is persons living with disabilities on a hand to mouth existence so that's why the ngos and pressure groups uh, came forward for example the successful mobilizations of that nature have been achieving results such as the implementation or rather the enactment of uh, the accessibility related regulations back in 2006 in line uh, with the introduction of UNCRPD the United Nations Convention for Rights of Persons with Disabilities in the global sphere in Sri Lanka we achieved uh, this milestone thanks to the advocacy of a of a pressure group led by uh, late Dr Ajit C S Pereira who acquired his later disability later in life and uh, went on to champion the rights of persons with disabilities through a court verdict that he gained in favor of making the public places accessible yeah. so we see there are there are a lot of lapses that have been reflected in the systems in place already and that's why these ngos and government support has not been enough to sort of overcome all the challenges faced by persons with disabilities i see now i think we you all may have touched upon it previously as well in our interview as well but i'd like to know i'm so we'd like to know on top of your heads exactly what would you all like to see improve in the current lifestyle of the different persons of the, of person living with disabilities in sri lanka maybe just if i could pinpoint as well like what you what would you like to see improve and with you all being strong advocates for our community as well what would you want to see improve within your community all right so let's start with this interview you mm-hmm. so this location right i i had to witness a step mm-hmm. and i'm a thankfully i with support i can walk so let's start with the public places let's start with even the transportation make it accessible for people with disabilities have announcements so let's go with people with visual or deafness having visual cues for people with deafness is vital so regardless of let's say transportation or any other public place for that matter if we cater to persons with disabilities so for person with like myself having a ramp and an accessible washroom is crucial and an elevator exactly so those are basic uh, building recommendation that you know when been put up and then for transportation the same thing then for any other education facilities again the same thing for people with deafness sign language interpreted interpretation is crucial so improving upon that so a lot of improvements has been made starting with transportation and if we have transportation any person with a phys- physical disability visual impairment deaf- deafness can go to the place of the service they would want to have that's true and if we have the necessary accommodation sign language interpretation and probably braille because that's a medium that people with visual impairments study mostly exactly so having do those accommodations those services is crucial in terms of the services required required be it education health employment even day to day life so that even day to day life and yeah. even recre- recreational activities exactly coming to parks and you know going yeah. to concerts that's true so that's the life any person would want to have exactly 
including persons with disabilities. That's great to hear, Janit, on that. And Janit, anything that you would want to add on to as well with, uh, or maybe uh, enhance upon what Janit mentioned, uh, Janit? Yeah. So, the Sri Lanka that I envision, uh, as Janit very rightly pointed out, there should be infrastructure that should be developed. But one thing that we tend to overlook, overlook uh, which is a valuable attribute in Sri Lankans, is the willingness and the desire to be uh, helpful or beneficial in some way for the well-being of persons living with disabilities. I think we have to capitalize on that. While the infrastructure is being built, while the policy makers may observe it as a considerable cost uh, to making uh, the mainstreaming of disability inclusion a reality, there is something that we can capitalize on where persons may change their attitude yes. to an extent that they feel persons with disabilities are just a part of our very own community and they should be seamlessly woven into the social fabric. And one example we can cite is what happened to Japan. I think after Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, there were more people with disabilities and kind of different kind of as they say, deformities yes. uh, born in Japan and then it became something very normal for them to see them day in and day out. And the infrastructure was spontaneously built and they were seamlessly included into the social fabric. I think Sri Lanka, it's about time that we try to stop hiding disability and talk about it and work on it out on the open, not as a case of charity, but as a case of inclusion, where tokenism does not have a place. So, for example, if a person is recruited as an employee of an organization, and if that person is living with a disability, it's not about making sure that he gets some kind of adequate remuneration, but also he's being included meaningfully in that workforce. And also, uh, when it comes to transport, it's not about giving your seat to a person living with whatever disability in the bus when you see them. Yes. It's also about uh, being cordial with them, uh, accepting them as they are and trying to see what you can uh, support them with in making their lives more meaningful. Exactly. And that does not limit to the kind of help you can do that also goes on to the level where you accommodate and accept them as an equal. There were some inspiring thoughts for everyone to ponder upon uh, Janita as well. Now, I think while maybe in, on a global scale, while there is a progressive integration of communities of persons living with disabilities in the world, how has the opportunities been in terms of employment or higher education per se for, for a person living with disabilities? Has there been an adequate opportunities available out there or is it still restricted as opposed to in the past years as well? Or do you see maybe a green light or some a glimmer of hope where there's increasing opportunities for people within your community? Uh, Janita, we'd like to start on you. Okay, so uh, I see the ray of hope as you mentioned because uh, now the systems have evolved to accept the inclusion in all these spheres. We have inclusive education, we have workplaces with diversity that people are trying to promote their own workplaces as disability inclusive, which is a great inspiration for persons with disabilities as well. But at the same time, we should look at the kind of social conditioning that has happened, where um, the kind of notion or awareness among parents of the children living with disabilities, the teachers, the every stakeholder in every field is such that persons with disabilities are seen as very fragile and extremely vulnerable so that they should be protected rather than included. We should get rid of this protectivist attitude mm -hmm. and make sure that they can experience whatever we are experiencing in real life. So I am a person with a disability and I am talking from my experience, starting from our very own parents to the teachers, to the uh, fellow employees, co-workers, we see them trying to protect us. Exactly. This should go away. And if I want to go on a hike with my office buddies, 
I think what my office buddies should do is not hiding that they are going on a trip, but instead they should make arrangements. Okay, let's look for a location where he can uh, go on a hike with us, right? And uh, if the location is not accessible, let's see what other activities we can include that person in. In our country, we have so many opportunities as well, like that, such as like where you can go on so many different recreational activities as well. So hopefully, we can see it included within our community as well, and. Uh, Gondanit, for you I have a question as well. Now, this might be a topic of quite some uh, confusion per se on the incorporation of schools that provide for special education for people with disabilities. What do you think of the concept behind that, uh, Jonathan? If you, if I can just touch upon my perspective on that. It's, don't you believe that it's somehow isolating people within your community from the general public and not really integrating them to live with each other hand in hand? What do you think of that concept, uh, Jonathan? Do you maybe think it should be changed or even reformed for the better? I believe it can be reformed mm -hmm. because those two paradigms should exist. And for people with disabilities, for that matter, I'll talk from my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I studied in a mainstream school and I was integrated. And because of that, there was a back and forth between people, with my colleagues as well as myself, because they got to know what a person with a physical disability is and how to support me. And like Janita mentioned, they ri rightfully thought of me and in integrated all the things they did, even going to the playground whenever a teacher is not there. Yeah. The typical school life was give accommodated alongside me and I believe there is a proportion of people with ch child children with disabilities that would need accommodated education or inclusive edu education but the problem that from my view is that we try to put them into if, if it is a person with a disability they should go into a different, that, uh, section, a different yeah. section and all that. But more often than not, children with disabilities can learn in a mainstream school and should they need assisted, assisted education, then of course that can be approached. It's, but important. It's, it, it's important to understand the child and what their capabilities are and then to figure out with the support of the the child the, himself or herself and the parents to give them informed to keep them informed exactly. and let them decide okay this is the situation we can go towards inclusive education and then along the way once they are getting that education the recreational aspects yeah. the social cohesion should be done together in, a, in an integrated way. So we have to understand the child and then go on and make their life as inclusive as much as possible because that's, that's what matters. I think we should be hopeful towards that where we can integrate and bring them and become much more inclusive towards your community as such as well. With that we're now moving on to a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on this topic. Welcome back everyone to the episode of Gen XYZ. Now today we're speaking to you on the integration of communities of persons living with disabilities in Sri Lanka and we have as our guests Janit Rukmal and Janit Ittapana. Now early on we spoke about how exactly are the advantages we see and disadvantages we see, the challenges and obstacles you all face as well and also the available opportunities out there. Now on this segment we'd want to maybe speak on more of a personal note. We'd like to hear your stories on how exactly you all excelled and how you all thrived amidst all of obstacles as well. Janita, I think starting off with you, tell us about your personal journey, Janita, and how exactly it has been. Okay, um, so I was not actually born with this specific uh, visual impairment. Um, 13 or 16 days into uh, my first 
few weeks of life, mm -hmm. uh, I faced what you call a medical misadventure. And uh, this was way back in 1980s towards the end when we had so much of turbulence in the country and doctors were not there to um, sort of see what's to be done exactly about. So as a result, I ended up as a visually impaired person for life. So my parents, who did not expect this at all, were befuddled. And then starting from my schooling age, that was a struggle. Because on the one hand, my parents had to uh, sort of depend or rather deal with the societal pressure where they got this unexpected disability in their child and uh, the kind of expectations they had for me had to be scaled down. So as a result, uh, admitting me to my first college, Malideva College, was a struggle. Nice. And then it went on. Uh, fortunately, uh, I should respectfully remind that Ananda College was very accommodating as a school and uh, was able to shape me as to who I am today uh, by both these schools. And because I was not relegated to the marginalized part of uh, being uh, sort of picked as those who have been educated under special education schools, I have been able to better integrate with the society, deal with everyone uh, in a more proactive manner. So uh, even in this journey, there have been challenges where when I aspired to learn science and uh, computer and in the mathematics stream at my advanced level, the system in Sri Lanka was such that uh, only the art stream was available for those who uh, live with disabilities in Sri Lanka. So with all those hurdles, uh, I, rea I realized that we need to have the passion to mainstream disability inclusion and that's where uh, I became uh, the sort of co-founder of Enable Lanka Foundation with my right. friends. And uh, that's where all these started happening uh, to make the change for the better. That's a great journey you've been through then, Janitha. And Janitha, how about you? What, what exactly did you start from? All right, so my, so let's start with the disability itself. So my disability was uh, while being born. So it's a, another medical condition. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of more surgeries and all that, you know, that part is done. Yeah. So I, started my education in Ananda, like Janitha, and grade 1 to 13, I studied there. So, And like Janitha mentioned, very accommodative, and because of the attitude they had, and coupled with the need that I had to acquire education, the confidence that I put forward in accessing education probably would have made the principal, the teachers to be accommodative. So that's another part that persons with disabilities should develop in my view. Again, like Janita mentioned, the attitudinal shift they had, the accommodation they, they did, putting classes whenever they are up, putting them down so that I can reach. Yeah. And the friends that I had made sure that I am included in a way that it's fruitful for me. Exactly. And after that, I pursued my education in psychology. So right now, I hold a BSc in psychology from Coventry University. Okay. Nice. So my passion towards disability advocacy started with integrating disability and mental health. Mm -hmm. So the exclusion that person with disabilities feel, how their mental health status is. And if you look at literature, there's no participation of persons with disabilities and no prevalence data, no. We have almost all other data for pe persons, but not focused on persons with disabilities. So that's my passion to integrate and put forward literature and programs that includes persons with disabilities and right now I'm here and thanks to my parents, my family, exactly. of course the positive environment mm -hmm. and the positive attitude of each, each and everyone had in my family and including my friends, 
has made sure that I am here. Exactly. I think that's another great uh, was that you have tried with us as well, Janit. On, and also since you mentioned on family, friends and stuff like that, I'm sure we all have a support system towards uh, helping us do well in our lives as well. Now I'm sure it's also some of, within our viewers as well, we have people who are support systems of persons living with disabilities. Maybe if you could help encourage them as well on what exactly are the do's and don'ts that they should be mindful of when being the support system of a person living with disability. We'd like to hear with you, Janita, on that uh, first. Uh, one misconception when we are starting with the support system, as I've been uh, trying to reiterate all throughout this program, is considering uh, persons with disabilities as cases of charity or special. Yes. No, they are human, first of all, and they are just having a different approach to life than everyone else. So keeping that in mind is the first step of figuring out support systems. So that's how, for example, our parents have seen what's best for us and helped us achieve our goals. Instead of, as you mentioned, there are do's and don'ts. So instead of uh, trying to limit persons with disabilities to specific areas, for example, there is a social conception or rather a misconception that entails music and everything that's to do with the auditory medium as the kind of um, go-to skills for persons with visual impairments. And for those who live with physical disabilities, people often uh, think of them as people who are sedentary, like who will have to remain at one place, who can't have their own means of transport to go to work. So they have to be always doing work remotely or get, get self-employment. So those are misconceptions that we have to get rid of when we build support system. Instance, what we have to do is try to facilitate these needs. Uh, actually, uh, in South Asian context, Japan is one of the best countries to gain examples from, where okay. the people have come up to volunteer and support whenever their support and interventions are needed, rather than doting on people and infantilize them, protect them and yeah. put them somewhere below the level of what everyone else is. I see. I think uh, with that, we are coming on to the f last few minutes of our show as well, Janita and Janit. Before we wrap up on our show as well, we'd like to hear a few final words from you on what exactly you would like to say to our viewers and also even maybe people within your community who's also watching this program as well a few words of advice or maybe inspiration as to what you would like to say. The floor is yours, uh, Janet. We'll start with you as well on that. Or maybe a few final words that you want to mention exactly on how exactly you would like to inspire people within even the global community or even your community as such. Janet, then we'll start with you on that. Yeah. All right. So throughout this program, we touched upon the concept of rights-based approach. Regardless of diversity, regardless of who we are, we have rights and we have to have those rights met. So we all have rights. So talk about our rights. Talk about your rights, regardless of children, women, and even people with disabilities. Talk about your rights because they, they, you have your rights. Exactly. So there's nothing much to say. And be confident and be woke vocal about your needs the more you talk about it the more they will hear the more they will listen to you and for the general public do not rush to put forward us in charity to help us in charity see us as persons because we have our own strengths and we can give give to the economy of sri lanka and exactly. yeah. be thriving people and all of us regardless of diversity are humans first and foremost regard as us as humans and we will be set for life definitely and then Janita, any final words from you for today's program okay i think janit summed it up so well but let me add a few things uh, for the viewers living with disabilities who are watching us i would say nothing is there to stop you for example other people look at you and think, well, if 
this person can achieve this level of education, expertise and professional competence, why can't we? And that is the same question we should ask ourselves. If everyone else is doing these things, why can't we? And there will be million answers to set you far back, saying, as I am a person living with a visual impairment, I can't be independent like just one other, other people. And as I live with a physical disability, I can't uh, go places. And as I am a deaf person or person living with a hearing impairment, I can't communicate well enough. So how can I achieve those things? But the answer is, there's technology and there's positive attitude emanating from a lot of people around you. If you harness those properly, there is your way. If you have the will, you have the way. And when it comes to general public, I would like to compliment those same remarks. So, persons with disabilities, although you see them as sources of inspiration, they are actually in a struggle yes. in life. So, it's better to empathize with that struggle rather than sympathizing them and see if you have to wear the same shoes that, wear, that they wear and walk a mile in it, how would you feel? And based on those emotions that you get, based on those impressions that you get at the end of it, if you can treat persons living with disabilities in the manner they deserve, rather than trying to protect them or make them treat as infants or children or people below yourself, rather than doing that, consider them equals. And also, respect their choices, exactly. respect their rights, and that respect should be mutual. And as persons with disabilities, we respect your right to be yourself and please respect ours to be ourselves. Thank you for those wise words and thank you to both of you, Jani Rukma and Jani Tapana for joining us on today's program of Gen XYZ. It's been a pleasure having you all on this show as well. Thank you for having us here and it, it's a pleasure to be here and talk about what needs to be done and you know, how we live our life and that we can live life and Sorry. thank you for being a great host. It's been a great pleasure having you all on this show as well and with that thank you to all of you for joining in. If you want to re-watch uh, this episode or if you all missed any part of the episode make sure you all go on youtube.com for the English for more on this episode. With that we now come to the end of our show. My name is Zahid Aman. Thank you for joining in on this program. Take care and stay safe.